The curious case of Natalia Grace. If you've watched the documentary series, you probably have more questions than you do have answers as it continues to unravel, it seems, episode by episode. There's so many elements to this case. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who was doing the right thing at one time? Who changed their opinion? What happened? What is she doing? What was her goals? So many questions. Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author joining us. Uh, I know I got you onto the uh, the documentary to take a look at this. Uh, I don't even know where to begin because it is everywhere. Um, but let's just start with your reactions to seeing this case uh, from what we've had presented to us in the documentary on both season one and season two. You know, the first thought is there are no reliable historians. <laughs> Clinical term there. Client is an unreliable historian. And I think that's one of the things that makes this so crazy. We just have this mix of people who have their own agendas, their own psychological problems. Everybody's got two cents. They all believe they're right. However, what they say, particularly Michael, what he says changes all mm -hmm. the time. And we've got some real characters. And, you know, my heart goes out to Natalia because any kid born with the severity of disabilities that she was born with and then ends up in an orphanage. My gosh, there is no way that any of us would have a, a traditional path through life. You know, sure. the, the odds were stacked against her. So I just give her credit for surviving and then bouncing from home to home. You know, her, her life Talk about challenging. It's hard to fathom what that's like for a person. It is. And and there's so much to unpack with this case, trying to figure out, okay, what what is the truth? I mean, the, the crux of the show is really based, and I should say show, but it's someone's life here. Um, the crux of this story, I should say, is the age of, of Natalia. They believe, Kevin Barnett and Christine Barnett, believe that they had adopted a young Ukrainian orphan who had dwarfism, a rare form of it, at the age of six. They were, at least according to them in the documentary, initially excited, thinking this is going to be a great thing. They already had several children. Uh, Christine uh, Barnett, uh, very much involved in uh, their children's lives, especially one who she believed uh, was a genius uh, and, and very well likely is, a uh, very high IQ uh, but also seemed to take a lot of credit for uh, that uh, that ability there that that uh, her son had. Uh, and, and from what we understand, at least the accusations are in the documentary, that she wanted to, to create some sort of system to make more kids geniuses. Because by being with Christine, you can achieve that. I mean, it almost sounds like a pyramid scheme. Uh, but <laughs> at the same point... I think she probably did believe that from what we had seen in some of the video and some of the testimony. Christine, of course, does not comment in this documentary to give her side, but um, the side that's painted really does kind of show some of that. And that maybe she thought, well, you know, so bring this Natalia girl in and maybe she can do the same thing with her. At least that's some of the accusations that have been levied against uh, her. What's your take on Christine, those accusations, and what her role may have been? Because, again, she didn't speak in the documentary, so it's all speculation as of right now. Yeah, it would be wonderful to hear her side. Will yeah. there be a season? Christine speaks. Yeah. And, you know, I, I doubt it, but there seems to be so much evidence of her narcissism and her grandiosity and the you know, video that was recorded of her cruelty mm -hmm. to Natalia and the allegations of abuse to some degree that seem to be true. At least Michael agrees with that, Natalia. So they corroborate each other on that. Um, really makes her look like an unbalanced person mm -hmm. who, again, um, should this person be raising puppies, you know, if they're that abusive and that violent, it's it's really alarming. And as far as the age thing, you know, we have the evidence. There's all kinds of footage of Natalia as a, a youngster when they first got her. She looks very different she now. Yeah. You know, you can see now she presents as an adult young woman. She was clearly a child. And, and you had the weird neighbors saying, oh, we knew she wasn't a little girl. Well, I think she was perhaps a very bright little girl mm -hmm. and did speak, perhaps because of her years in the orphanage. She spoke more like an adult 
just because she was exposed to certain adults, you know, she presented as older, perhaps verbally, but, you know, the other um, things that the neighbors were all saying is, oh, when she was in that apartment alone, she would come over to our house all the time. She would come in, get in the refrigerator. I would expect an eight-year-old to do things like that. Sure, especially know? an eight-year-old left to their own resources in an exactly. apartment. Exactly. That's exactly what I would think a little kid is going to do. They're searching for an adult. They're searching for stability. They want somebody to pay attention to them. So, yeah, you know, we don't know that people that made the film the program, um, to what extent did they cherry pick the people that were going to support the point that they wanted to make? Mm -hmm. And there may have been people who had very different opinions. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.